It's not like you, I can teach it to you. Once you catch the vision, you got it. Catch the Vision Podcast. Leadership tips, powerful lessons, and inspiration. That's not how this worked, and it's never worked this way. If you didn't get the concept, how in the world are you going to understand what I'm saying? Here's your hosts, John Trimble and Mike Cornwell. Audio, you can see it there, and boop. Hey, this is Mike. Good this is John. Morning. We're talking about Catch the Vision. That's today. Welcome to our podcast. Uh, today we're going to talk about... Uh, Lots a, of things. A similar, a similar <laughs> thing to our topic last week. Uh, we're going to be talking about confidence, but we're going to have kind of, we're going to flip it on its head. And we're talking about um, what John is calling kind of false confidence. And what I wrote on uh, the, the thing here, which I think kind of makes sense to describe this, is, is one of the uh, most dangerous things that can be following a leader and really the people that are kind of following underneath them. So why don't you, why don't you tell us about this kind of concept, John? Well, we were discussing a little bit that if you're, if you have false confidence, people are going to pick up on it. I mean, not right away. Yeah. But they're going to in time go, they, they just don't feel secure because you're not really secure. You got a false confidence. I mean, that's not the definition of security, right? And so people say, he's not quite confident. He doesn't seem to be sold on the idea, you know? And so he, he's delicately maybe saying some things as a leader, but he's not fully, truly confident about it. So it, it gets picked up. And I think what happens next is misdirection. His direction cannot be solid and right, going the right way. If he's falsely confident about, that. I mean, if you're if you have a false confidence or a bad, you know, or no confidence, but a false confidence in some other kind of direction uh, or some other teaching than scripture, you you're you're gonna be detected. People pick up on that. So when you say false confidence, what do you what are you really what are you really saying? Well, I'm saying he's confident, but he's on he's on a false premise. Oh, I see. You know, what I mean, he. Yeah, we did talk about that last time. It's kind of. This is now reminding me. We came, it kind of came to this understanding last time yeah. about this having this foundation. You have a strong foundation, and you kind of build on top of that, and that's the nature of having confidence. And your confidence, when it's built on a good foundation, it's from experiences, and you and you know what's going on and stuff like that. And I know that's why John Maxwell really advocates for a leader to not lead in areas that they don't know. That instead to be like a shepherd. I mean, sometimes a shepherd does have to move his flock through areas he doesn't know anything about because that does happen, but that's infrequent and more likely it's like, I've already run sheep in this area so many times now. Come this way. No, it's real easy. It's not as hard as you think it is. Oh, it's fine. That's yeah, and, hard. and that's where a leader has to make a decision yeah. to say, this is what we're doing. This is what I'm saying. And we got to go this way. He can't spend a, a, a series of weeks and months discussing and consulting when he knows the right way. Yeah. I mean, that's a problem. <laughs> I just thought of something that, you know, I'm, I I come down and I, I look at my coffee mug here and I'm looking at, you know, like Thomas Jefferson. And ah. stuff. <laughs> I like John Maxwell, but what I just said about that is total nonsense. I do agree. <laughs> I do agree that leaders, it, it's good for leaders to step into areas that they know. Not a single founding father would be well known if they had been leading only in the areas that they know something about. They, they had to be autocratic to some degree because otherwise they would have never been point men. They would have never gone. You know, there's always some kind of point man bringing the church, bringing something, a group somewhere. He's out front. Not the best place to be for a leader because that's you're you're on the front line and you know the enemy attacks appointment. Yeah. And every appointment in history has fallen down to some degree and gotten bad rap uh, because he's been attacked because he's out there. But he brought the group in a certain direction. Yeah, I agree. You know, now, could he change in midstream and become a little more consulting and a little more negotiating and a little more uh, uh, delegating? And he could, but most likely no. I mean, John the Baptist was not going to be anything but this is what I'm supposed to do, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm, and there he yeah, went. I would agree. And he's definitely 
another term that people will use for that would be like the pioneer. They're the ones that pioneer, are going out there. Pointman. They're the ones that are trying to cut the bushes down. I mean, John the Baptist <laughs> is like a per, is a perfect example of that. Yeah, I mean, and that's extreme because from God he had his direction and what he had to do. <laughs> Sorry about that. And he went after it, and he had he didn't consult with anybody. But you know, you get take the Apostle Paul. He said, you know, I got my direction and I conferred not. With flesh and blood. I didn't go to man and find out if they all agree with it and everything. Oh, my Lord. I, I didn't yeah. have time to do that because I had to do this. And that's okay, too. As long as in time, when there's connection and there's a flow in the group, the leader has to find a connection that allows him to, like I said, delegate, negotiate, consult, and, and work with the people. But not to the degree that he doesn't lead. You know, some people say... You shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do this. Shouldn't. And if I got done doing everything they shouldn't have done, I shouldn't have done, I wouldn't even be a leader. Well, the thing, I wouldn't, the I would thing be... that John the Baptist led at, I, I think he led in ideas and not in people. Yeah. But most of his word was metanoia. He was saying uh, the Greek is 180 degrees, uh, repentance. Yeah. That was his big shot. And he stuck on that. Yes, he stayed on it. He stayed on He stuck on that. And that, he had to. It was his calling, and, and, and definitely... I'll tell you, you know, this is a sort of sort of slight term, but it actually makes sense to this podcast. YouTube and the internet has created so many John the Baptists that it's, it's mind-numbing. It's actually <laughs> mind-numbing. The number of people who are online who say, the creek is 180 degrees, the creek is 180 degrees, and no matter how totally insane it is, and they just kind of stay on it, and they go, go, go. And, dude, they got some big audiences i mean like we're talking some <laughs> do we live in a very interesting time you know some people say clean the fish and get them all straight and then they'll follow jesus no jesus cleans the fish so i had some guy tell me you if you didn't repent then you didn't really get saved well I was no more interested in repenting than the man on the moon. Somebody told me about Christ and being saved, and I just wanted to be saved. I knew I had to get Jesus. After that, in time, I changed. A lot of things changed. A lot of repentance happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, but yeah. repentance is not first, then salvation. That's not how it works. Oh, yeah, that's because right. otherwise, that's right. salvation would be by works. Hey, I repented good, and yeah. I got the... No, 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 no. No, no. You got the cart before the horse. So we have to be, and that's why I love people on social media. You know, they they take off with the cart, but they forgot the horse. Yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing. I see this crap all the time on social media. People, like, they definitely don't understand. Um, I find myself kind of lucky because I've, I've run in, and I've, I've looked at a bunch of Christian apologetics and stuff. I don't know if I've intentionally went out there, but YouTube's kind of served my way. And one of those things, to your point, is you very quickly find out that one of the most savvy arguments about Christianity is that it is fundamentally different than every other one where you have to do something to get something. And it's the it's only one how... in which there's not a do something to get something. You, that you boggles get, people You up. get something which is the nature of grace itself. That, grace, is, exactly. grace can't be earned. That's not the nature of grace whatsoever. And that is fundamentally different than every other yeah. religion, period, full Absolutely. stop. Absolutely. I don't care if we're talking the most benign of religions, would be, which would be like Buddha, like Buddhism, or, or like Taoism, or any of these kinds Whatever. of things. There's still not a, um, you still got to do something first. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's funny too. If you don't surrender, well, surrender indicates a struggle, a fight. Mm. I got to be fighting if you're going to surrender. <laughs> and the reason why I say that is because We've got this backwards. Really, the script, the Bible teaches give over. Uh, not give up, because give up implies a struggle. Give over. And so when I came to the Lord, I just said, here, here I am. I gave it over. I, did, I, was, I didn't quit fighting. I didn't surrender. I just said, uh, here it is. I here see. it is. I, I've got nothing. I need you. Boom, Jesus came into my heart and changed my life, 100%. And, and, the, and the change... Drugs, drinking, wine, women, so the whole thing left. Hippie them, hip, all that stuff left. He did that. You still wear a tie-dye shirt like 50 years later. I know. Not everything. <laughs> well, I, I like I tell people who, who have ever touched my family, I say, don't I, I don't guarantee how sanctified I am. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus was cleaning the fish after he caught the fish. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. And we wanna we wanna tell the people. 
If you don't do the grace is not a do. Grace is a, grace is is what it actually does for you what no one can do. Grace puts you in the place. You know, grace comes and does it. Grace is a, a, a does. It's not a going to do. It's a does. And suddenly we find ourselves by grace somewhere, and then the action happens. But we got it mixed up. We're trying to earn grace, do grace. You can't do grace. Mm. You can't do grace. Grace is a gift. We are saved by, by grace, and that's a gift of God, it says. So, and as is faith is a gift of God, and boy, that's another hard one that people can't accept. Well, I'm working to get fa working to get faith. You don't get faith by works; you get it by hearing. It's very important. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so we have got to get straight. This is one of the reasons why I want to do a book. Remember, I talked to you way back. If leadership doesn't teach the right stuff, they have the false confidence and the wrong stuff. You, the People are going to suffer. They're going to get some kind of misdirection because they don't have the basic fundamentals in line the way it should be. But yeah, I will say, I'm going to say this is probably the most controversial statement I probably will ever say, but that ship sailed a long time ago for me not to be controversial. From where? <laughs> say it again. I said that ship sailed a long time ago for me not to be controversial. <laughs> So I'm going to say something pretty controversial in the leadership space. Um, I am not a person who... I love the people. I care for their safety. But I have a very zen view of the failures of leaders and the, and, and the people who follow them. At the end of the day... Um, these people who are following, they, 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 I'm going to have a really hard time saying this. They don't, they didn't have a prayer to begin with. As in like they needed, the, the, not to follow a leader is just not an option. And so by virtue of the fact that things happen to them, that is just what happens. It It just happens. As in like, whether a leader is as good as they are don't, or need to be, rarely is that the case. And oftentimes, through the, these failures, it'll happen. And I really think kind of the main message that I want to impart is especially anybody who is leading somebody and is concerned that they're going to make mistakes and people are going to suffer. You just have to accept that that's part of the reality. No matter how good you are. You've already, you, you were talking just before this, and we'll, we'll probably go into that, like, the number of leaders biblical that are very well respected and that they had all caused <laughs> many problems for people who are following them. That is just, that is the name of the game and it is what it is, but it can't be considered that somehow um, you, you're never going to perfectly avoid it and you can't be afraid of it you should be cognizant and try to be as responsible and, and like, you know, we're talking about false confidence and mm. you should, you should try to make your way to it, but you, that should not deter people from becoming a leader and being successful or not, because we need leaders and they're going, and people are going to make mistakes and by God, I make a lot of mistakes. You know, there's another, there's another uh, saying that you made me think of the, it's like one bear, beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. We've heard that before. Sure. And and in boiled all down, no one chooses to be a leader. Not really. They, I mean, they kind of do. They kind of don't. I mean, not maybe in the first go, they kind of don't. No, I mean, he told me where to get bread. Oh, let's go talk to Mike. Man, someone yes. else says, let's talk to Mike. Pretty soon, he's got a following of people coming to him as a leader to tell him where to go to get bread. Still a beggar. Yeah. But he he is the one that's speaking the I right. I like how I'm the beggar. He used my name for that. <laughs> he's a beggar. So, yeah. So you know. I, well, we, I mean, there's a Marine Corps saying out there that says there's two Marines walking down the road. One's the leader. So <laughs> that that basically the gist is is that anytime you have two people, someone is a leader. Somebody's going to be. That's right. I mean, I and, believe that, and, and I would definitely say I have seen that. It's funny, like the first time that that really hit me. You know, really, you know, I kind of caught that reality. I started thinking about 
all the times, like back in high school, like, you know, if you go down this road at like the right time and see that the high schoolers going down, you're going to see like two people walk in and like three people walk in. One of those people is the leader of that pair. And he's not probably walking way behind. He's right up there with a bunch of them, or yes. if not in front. Uh, see, that to me is a natural is natural occurrence, a natural of leader. It is. Yeah. But you can't choose to be a leader. I mean, we talked about the the lack of leadership is not a lack of people. We got people, but we don't have real guys that stand up and be leaders. And they're also I we, think the choosing, you said they're normally they're not chosen. I think it's once you choose and you become cognizant of what's going on. That's when the game really starts. Well, definitely. But I, what I was going to say, though, yeah. they they decide to do that, like you said. But that's a different calling. When God says, I want you, he, he found a chicken, you know what the word is, baby, <laughs> crappy, insecure, Stupid leader hiding behind a great big, oh, huge stone wine press. He was hiding in there, scared to death, trying to do a little bit for his family. And he comes up and says, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. I'm sure Gideon went, excuse me, who? Who are you talking to? Gideon was, wasn't was a mighty, a man, or a valor. None of those things were true. But God decided to use him. And he did a miraculous thing with 300 men, point oh, less than 0.01% of the people he had. 32,000 of them just left him for fear. All of a sudden, 22,000 left them. So, and then he boiled down. They said, just take the ones that drink with their eyes open, paying attention. And he did and got 300. That's technically less than 0.01%. Mm. And then he conquered uh, the Midianites. So I, I think we have to... Put a God factor in this leadership. Okay, oh, there's got to be a God factor in true and good leadership. Yes, there are natural leaders. In fact, there are times where it's it's a scary thing because I've seen people say to movie stars and famous people, "Boy, you'd make a great leader. You'd make you know everybody would really listen to you. They would follow you. You'd be a great this. You'll be a great that." They have natural ability, but they, they're no more God's chosen leader than the man in the moon. And we, we've got to be careful about that, you know, because, the, <clears throat> I mean, we've seen it happen. And so we put them in place to be a leader or, some, or a role model. And they're about as much a role model you know as my what? dog. So I'll, I'll, I'll go on this. Let's, I'll, I'll try to kind of pivot this back, kind of circle this around back to the topic. Here's an example of false confidence. Right, yep. what you're talking about, right there you, you, you have a uh, a foundation which you think is a good foundation. You then use it as a springboard, and for some reason, it doesn't quite doesn't quite work like it's supposed to. Leadership titles, having a leadership title is a false confidence, yeah. and what I've seen, um, I think other than just generally being an NCO in the Marine Corps, I don't know if I've ever had a leadership title before. So for me, I, it doesn't really, maybe if somebody were to give me a leadership title, um, it would go to my head. I mean, but this isn't about me. The 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 <laughs> well, the I've, fact I've seen people do this because especially like for me as more observant type, I'm a little bit less really type a charismatic out there that's not my type if anything I, I have to like work towards that and like try to improve my i'm very disagreeable very disagreeable no i wouldn't say <laughs> you're type a no so but i am i am extremely competitive extremely competitive but the <clears throat> i mentioned this i've seen so many people who in like in like the normal high school or college setting type person where these people kind of they have like good personalities and they're more out there get kind of chosen and they get put out in the leadership and, titles and they're like, and I'm the leader of the group yeah. and they're, they're trying to get everybody to do stuff, but they're never successful in actually making the group actually be successful. Yeah. And so they're using this as a springboard to say, Hey, give me power, even though you would not give me this power. Yeah. And even if they were to give them this power, which is very often the case, Oftentimes, enough to actually become the leader of your peers is just to go, you know what? I'm going to be the leader. 
not saying it out to them, mm -hmm. but just having that mindset and jumping out there, all of a sudden you'll start to do things differently because more often than not, people are not trying to be the leader. And so when somebody starts to kind of make their way up, that is like the natural formation of leader. But the moment you go out there and say, well, I'm the leader, then the eye rolls start happening. Then the subversion starts <laughs> happening that, you know, and then people are like, well, I want to go this way. And they're like, well, you can't because I'm the leader. Yeah. You know? Well, you've heard that said, uh, you heard it said where the church went up to a guy and said, we think you're really humble. We appreciate it. And they gave him a humble button and the, they took the button away from him because he wore it. <laughs> you know, so, I haven't heard that. So you can accept, all right, I'm the leader. Uh, that's responsibility. You can take that the right way. But if you start wearing it, you know, it's like that person I told you that comes in, hey, I'm prophet so-and-so. Hey, I'm apostle mm -hmm. so-and-so. And they didn't, you know, but I, I met a, I met leaders who, when you tell them they're the pastor, they go, no, 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 no. I'm just uh, uh, one of the crowd. Only trouble is the whole crowd, whatever he says, they do. They follow him. And he lives it right down and dirty with the rest of them. So they say, this guy we can follow. This guy we can trust. And he never claims leadership. He never. He just wants to be what he is and do what he does. And everybody likes it. Everybody's a part of it. And God help you if you want to try to lead against that man. Because yeah. we, we often, on, on the farm, we call him the bell heifer. If his bell is ringing, those cows are going where the bell heifer goes. They're not, they're not, I don't care what kind of thing you are or you, what, your whole education. If this bell heifer says, no, we're going this way, you're done. They ain't following you. They're following that bell heifer who always knows where to go, gets grass, and, and goes the way that, that the bell is ringing. So yeah, that's right. We have to find those bell heifers. We have to find those ones that have the bell that everybody else trusts, everybody else believes in, everybody else says, no, no, no. He's never led us astray so far. We're going that way. Well, and I, and I would say with that, um, the problem with some of these analogies, it, this is a really good one. The problem with some of these analogies for some people who would be watching this is if they are not that person or they don't lead that way, <laughs> they think that that's not them. But I, I'm a very big proponent that you can lead in secret. I'm very big proponent of this. And what yeah. that means is you're grounded. We talked very, we talked quite a bit about that, that you, you have your ear down to the ground. That's why people listen to them because they actually know what's happening. They've done their homework. They've gone around where everybody else would just go to one person and they would just do like some sort of gossip. That person's going to go to 15 different people and ask them what they know about the thing. And then they know. So then when they speak, they have a sense of truth that other people don't have. And they may even have the ability, this is where disagreeable tends to be, from what I've gathered, a slightly better trait for leadership than people think. If you're too disagreeable, it's very difficult to be a leader. But sometimes you got to tell people, no, you're wrong. Like you're yeah. wrong, but it's a different kind of, I, it's it's because the person's not insecure right. about it. It's like, right. let me shake you out of your funk. What you know is wrong. And and very quickly, just as like a tactical point to that, if you run into a situation where you definitively know what the like what's actually happening, and you've got some person whom you think should know, as in you're gonna take the time to try to correct them. Try it like once or twice, but don't go any further than that because it's not worth your time. In other words, you tell them the truth. Yeah. And you can say it one more time, and then you just got to be like, I got other things to do. Because if you spend too much time on it, it's going to it's going to wear you down, and you're going to be focused on something. Unless that person really matters, yep. it's not worth it. Because if you lead, the, th the whole nature of leading a group, sometimes it's just enough to lead certain people, and then you just let the riffraff fall in line. Yep. They'll, yeah, they'll come around. It's it, well. Here's another thing that that to think about and along that mm -hmm. line, but in a different way of thinking about it. Churches have a bunch of families, but the church can't function like a family, even though they're in the family of God. Here's what happens: the pastor has a group full of families. And the pastor's been leading along, and they're happily going on in the way as a leader. He's a good leader. And he's an example to the flock, et cetera, which it says to be example to the flock. But then good old lovable, we just love Uncle Harry. And Uncle Harry decides that this is the direction we should go, not this way. It's usually in a matter of faith. But suddenly the people are easily caught by a sentimental reason 
that they should follow family member. And this is why family churches. Oh, I see. Like if you had the John Trimble Church of uh, of uh, of Mountain City or or the uh, the Trimble uh, something or other fellowship. Suddenly, oh, we have to honor someone in the family because he is an uncle or he is a brother or he is a sister in the family. And what happens is the leader is caught because now he's he's not just coming against family. He's not just coming. He he's also has to lead whether that family agrees or not. And that's the crux of the problem that we find so many churches today. They are stuck, unable to lead against family family, quote-unquote, sentimental reasons. Uh, Uncle Harry, Uncle Bob, we love him, and he's going this way, so we'll go with Uncle Bob. And and to some degree, family has a bell on them, and they hear the bell, oh, let's go this way. But you you got to be careful about that. God leads uh, in different ways and calls different leaders. And, and uh, I think a lot of us have this lack of leadership because there's not a guy, very few, that will stand up to the truth and stand up to what's right and go the right direction, even if the family disagrees. That's a leader to me, even though it's hard. I, I, uh, I think leadership is the worst thing you can choose to be. And pastoring is number one worst because it's it's, it's fraught with every kind of attack and attention, and we don't like him. We don't well, like- we, 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 before we turned this on, we were, we were talking about somebody we kind of co-known, and they got hit. I think... Um, when did you guys actually come? Like, when did you start coming to the church here? Do you kind of know? Church? Yeah. Oh, a couple of years ago. Almost. 02 or 03? Well, when I, first, when I came or to 22, you. 22, 23. Yeah. Two years ago. Two years ago. I, I mentioned this because, um, you know, we were maybe like one year before that. And so um, we found, oh, yeah, I remember when you guys moved down. So we, we, we had experiences with that person, like enough over a long enough period of time that I'll tell you, it went like, you know, let me try to do it for the, the crowd here. It, I'm going to do it like this. <laughs> it, it was like this, right? It was really good. It was, it was nice and good. And then it was like, <laughs> to like in a blink of an eye, yeah, it totally you're... flipped over where all of a sudden it was, and there was just one little thing here, one little thing there. And then there was obviously stuff going on. I didn't know nothing about, I'm just like, I think there's like fire going on, and I'm like, I'm just, I'm just not even gonna get into this. I smell smoke, but yeah, there is because because it was starting to become into public, because there's all this fire that's happening outside, and then it was coming into public, yep. but it was being, it was like, it was very, it was sneaking its way in, and it, it would be like talking about it in public, but talking about it in roundabout way so only like the four people in the audience know what he's talking about but it's like something's going on here yeah but yeah. but the earlier time during all of that um i'm now trying to remember uh, trying to tie this back to to what you were saying um you were talking about family and we got to be careful of family yeah uh, here's another here's another way of saying it that will help you jar your memory, I yeah, think, maybe. and kick you up again. If we have a group that's leading the church, like a plurality of eldership, or um, a group... Oh, I remember now. I remember now. Sorry it, to cut you off. Um, I think what happened was he kept he, he kept getting lifted up, and I, I think it either went to his head or... Um, he, he started maybe leaning out over what his leadership was and he made reached a, critical mass. He reached critical mass He's only and, a, yep. and it, it started kind of crumbling apart. And I don't think he really understood that that was going on and did not reassess and maybe like actually, I mean, we saw it in real time starting to happen where again, like yeah. he would get up and like apologize on stage. Like, what are you doing? What are you even talking about? Most of the people in this crowd <laughs> don't even know. I know. So you don't need to And that's do- where leadership screws up because they don't know that they didn't know. Yes. And so what happens? That's hap- what, yes, yeah. yes. And then that, what happens it. is the leader is making a decision 
and he doesn't know what they don't know, and they're lost. Yes. And that's false confidence. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's we saw false it. confidence. And it was not that way in the beginning. No, 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 no. no. It, it, over time. <laughs> like I said, it just kind of the kept leader going. got to a point where he's going to be a... Sooner or later, you're a sieve. You're a critical mass, and nothing is... You can't hold... It's yes. like t- biting off more than you can grasp. I mean, here's an example, right? Like that I could see that happens in these times. All of a sudden, you're so popular. And I don't mean necessarily, maybe it is no, the not, same way. Yeah, like, popular, popular. But, but you're just popular enough that there's now enough people around that know your name. They know about things that you got going on. They have good ideas. They want to come directly to you for whatever reason, even though you know nothing about these things. And then you start throwing your opinion about it. And you start getting involved in all these. If you're not careful, you're not... This is why Jesus, by the way, has the apostles do all the work. Yeah. A lot of these extroverted types don't understand this. That's why I believe you can lead in secret. At some point, you kind of have to come out, but that you got to lead like a few people. If we got into the teaching of the fivefold ministry and prophets and, and apostles, we would be deep, and I can do it. I've done much study on that. But let me just say this, yeah. that the Bible says, and you would think that that would be Jesus would be enough. Listen to me when I get when I get this across. But the Bible says he entered and his train filled the temple. It doesn't say Jesus filled the temple. It says his train yeah, filled yeah, the temple. Yeah, 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 it's yeah, because yeah. he's such a perfect leader, which he was, the only perfect leader, that all behind him were delegated, negotiated, connected, and moving with him. The flow is everybody, not just the leader, but everybody filled the temple. His train filled the temple. I often thought about that. His train filled the temple? What about Jesus? Isn't Jesus enough? Yes, Jesus is enough. Yes. He gets in there, man. He is the Lord, and he is the glorious one, and we're all going to be praising him. Time. But and we're not going to be praising I his see, train. I, 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 but yeah. you got to think yeah. about this for a minute, because the Bible says his train filled the temple, and and the glory of God filled the temple. Well, isn't that interesting? He, calls the, he said that we've been glorified. I'm going to throw a dart in the air just to, to show how biblically ignorant I am. <laughs> This is in Revelations, right? This is the Revelation. That's in Revelations. Oh uh, no, it's also in uh, Isaiah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. Yeah, yeah, right. And when he talked to him, burning lips, and and called Isaiah to speak for him. But yeah, it's in the Revelation. But you know, we we um forget that Jesus said to his body, the church, to function in a way that. By that which every joint supplies. What a powerful statement in Ephesians. We have to hear and flow with one another. I mean, bad leader, it's very hard to get you. If your head is not screwed on straight, your body is going to suffer. If you're insane, your body begins to deteriorate. You don't, you're, you're insane. You're, 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 you don't wash, you don't clean, you don't move, you don't exercise, you don't, you don't do the proper things. That's why we see these derelicts out there walking around mental illness and they're in disheveled and, and not in great shape. You never see a uh, derelict homeless guy dressed to the nines and looks like he's a millionaire. You don't see that. Why? Because if the head is lost, the body gets lost sooner or later. And so, this is part of the thing that we talk about. We talk about being a good leader, but mm-hmm. really, Jesus is the best leader ever. He's the perfect leader. And all will follow yeah. him and, and do his work. You know, he said, do my will. You love me? Do my will. Love me? Do my will. So we are the ones that become Christ to this world. And in that, he is glorified because he did his work right, because he's the right leader. He even says it, you know, that he's glorified in it. So we can't get away from the truth that the right leader makes a right church. And when we see the, like after time, you saw the flaws and it, the leader wasn't quite right. And so we we'll begin, eventually turn into, we pick up on it. It eventually turned into things like gossip, right? Once gossip, gossip is insidious. And when, when there's now gossip starting to happen, uh, and I think that that's what, that he was trying to, he was trying to quell. And I, and I get that. And I, and any, and I, and I will say this, like, as my 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 actual opinion. I mean, I told you I, I'd laugh like when you would say some of these things. I would laugh so hard in the back because I know what was going on. And for me, it was just funny because I don't take this stuff that seriously. I know other people do because it's like my reputation, dude. Who cares about your reputation? How about you move to the place which 
there's there's more to that but uh, you know in in the tr the truest sense like um i actually felt kind of bad for him and i knew what he was trying to do i i'm a little skeptical that his methods were the right ways but he was trying to do stuff like which were good which was like i'm trying to inform everybody here of that like this is what's happening but what should have happened instead of that was i'm gonna have my own private meeting if you're interested in coming and I will address this topic, I'm not going to address this. And like, it's like, just what well, is the audience? And this is like, this is leadership one-on-one -on -one stuff of like talking to people. There's, there's a time and a place for certain topics. There's a time and a place with certain kinds of people in the room. There's certain kinds of ways to even talk when you're dealing with, if there's one person, two people, three people, there's five people, there's 10, there's a hundred people that where what is the nature of all all that stuff? Like you kind of have to know how to speak to different sets of people because what are you trying to achieve? If you're trying to confuse the hell out of a group of people <laughs> that don't know your interpersonal things by talking about your person thing, do that. Yeah. But well, when you've got a when you've got a generic audience like a church, which I've never I've never led a church. I don't know if I'll ever lead a church. That's not I don't think that that's necessarily my calling, at least as of now. I would never confuse the fact that that church, and I feel like this person kind of knew this, but again, once you get to the top, you think, oh my God, the world is falling he, he down. It's like, dude, it's blue outside. It's nice. <laughs> yeah, he didn't he, intentionally know it and intentionally ignore it, but he did grow into it and realize some things. But what I'm saying yeah, is, yeah. What, I, what I'm saying, what I want to say, take a couple minutes to say, because okay, you're not going to like this. Uh, some people are not going to like this, but... Some people are anointed to preach, but they're not anointed to share. They're not, they don't, they, oh, yeah. they can preach it like crazy. And this one I'm thinking about, we're, maybe we're talking about, he can preach, can't share. He can't sit down and just share. And so what happens is he get, he loses a an edge as a leader. And then you got pastors that come up and they just share and they never preach. They're afraid to press home the point. Oh, we don't want them to, want to preach that stuff. Just share it, and we'll have a good old time, a fr church friendly. But the problem is, is that the people. I was listening to a preacher the other day in a tent meeting right here, right up here to the street. It's go, it's done now, but but that guy was a preacher, and when he was done, you knew exactly what he was trying to get across from his anointing of, to preach. Whether he could share or not, I don't I don't know and I didn't care. Yeah. But I said to myself, now that guy can preach and that yeah, I would agree. brought home the message. I got it. I already had he, it and I already believed I, it, but I, I got I, the message. I, I, I tried to tell people that I like I know what his I know his exact personality type. His type, he's an I he's an idealist type who is an extroverted, but he's not really extroverted, but he's he, type he's, A. Yeah. He's generally more extroverted. And um, that role is he's very good. It's an abstract speaker, not a concrete speaker. So he can speak in generality. So he can blow smoke that fills the corner. That's what abstractions do. He can, he can kind of do that. So what that means is he can say three things and without even trying. He's not even thinking about it. That affects that person, that person, and that. And they're all fundamentally different. He has that capability. Anointed to preach. That's what He it is. has that, but... The ability to lead, the ability to do that. Um, I, look, I don't I, think, look, I, I, I think he, um, and this is more general. This is, um, I don't think he had any formal training in leadership or had like a leadership mentor who's just being like, yeah, no, like no, let, let's no. tone that, let's tone it down. Yeah, no. You need to be focusing more on leadership, which in some cases might be doing nothing, do nothing, go <laughs> I remember my first preaching class, homiletics. He said, get up and do a sermon. Or, Out of the blue, went to the class. He said, get up, do a, do a sermon with us. Preach at it, tell us, yeah. whatever. And I went, okay. And I happened to have a topic. I got in my hand. I had three points. And so I went for my notes from time to time. And I'm kind of extemporaneous. Once I have notes, if I've already written them, I remember them. And I'll get to it sooner or later. Sometimes I pick up my note. Oh, yeah, this, you know. But not very often. But anyway, I preach this message and everything. And he's supposed to critique my message. And I thought, okay, when I get done, you know, in the back of my mind, he's going to rip me apart. I missed this. I didn't uh, do yeah. this. I didn't do that. You know, I had too much of this, too much of that. And I thought, oh boy, I'm in trouble. And when he, uh, uh, when he got done, we, uh, when I got done, each of us are going to have a little time with him. 
And so I went to see him and he said, you're way too, I thought nothing on points, nothing on preaching, nothing on the stuff he was teaching. He looked at me and said, you're way too casual. Oh yeah. And I went, excuse me? The last thing I would ever even think of, (laughs) that's what he told me. You're way too casual. You'll, no way. And I, I was flabbergasted. And for the rest of my life, even to this day, I'm very careful not to be casual. Now I've got a passion so I can overcome some of that casualty. Oh, I see. But I was so casual so what, what, what that, is that nobody took me serious. I mean, I now, can... Let me just finish this thought. Yeah. If you're too casual, you're just sharing and you're just kind of casual, sooner or later, what will rise up is someone not casual, anointed to preach, can lay at home, and the people are going to say, hey, that guy can lay at home. Let's pay attention to him. They get you. You can have a month or two of casualness, but you can't have a year or two of casualness because you lose the flock. Uh, I'm sorry, but I've seen this happen over and over and over. And I, this is what I'm saying to people here because we talked about lack of leadership. I know it's easy for you to critique leaders yeah. because you need to critique leaders because you got to be. You got to be stupid if you don't critique the leader to some degree. You, you just must be dumb, or okay, wherever I'll go. You know, you can't be dumb and stupid, but you have to, like Jesus said, "My sheep know my voice." You got to know the leader's voice. But you, but you, but how many times were he challenged? Jesus was challenged by the disciples. They oh, were dumb Lord. and stupid. They but challenge, challenge, challenge. And I'm saying, Jesus never rebuked him for that. He never rebuked him for that. The insecure leader will, will well, go. Well, hold on. Re- rebuked who for what? For challenging. No, no. Well, rebuked who? The, he the never rebuked the disciples disciple. for challenging him. He he never defended. Oh, oh you're saying like, oh, who are you to say? Yeah, he never yeah, defended yeah. himself. He never, he, he just led them right along. And so a well, leader. Some of, the, some of the times he's doing the, uh, he's doing the, uh, you're retarded. Let me tell you a second time. <laughs> well, that's what he did with me. He said, actually, he said your special needs. So, so, and I, 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 I go along with it. I have special needs. But you know what? The oh, leader, you who has so little faith. So let little me faith. tell you yeah. this thing now. Oh, oh uh, me and us. You know that rebuked the children that was going to rain down fire. You know uh, all these kind, these kind. Of, anyway, a leader yeah. keeps on leading. Is what I want to say. He, he, yeah, I see what you're if he resigns and moves on and you never see him again, he he, he came to a critical mass of himself and he lost his leadership. John, I'll tell you, I think this job is hell. What? It feels like hell. Okay. I mean, because <laughs> this is this is you know your your depiction there. You, I believe, from my experience, when you are leading, you are you're not just in the thick of like, let's say one problem, you might be at the nexus where all the problems are coming together as a, as, as like a wheel and a spoke. And the more that I would say that you accept the mantle of leadership, the more that if you get slightly, you're starting to get pushed out of that, you find your way back to it. In other words, you that to. you, you know that if, uh, some, somebody better, stand up and somebody better start guiding the herd. And so if you have that natural calling and then you've, you've had the training and stuff, you're, yeah. and it's hard. I will say if like from my own experience, I've had a lot of experiences to include lately where I'm like, why am I doing this? Yeah. And the, and the answer is it doesn't come out like, ah. it'll come out and it will say what it is. And you're like, I don't care about that crap. <laughs> <laughs> you'll still, you'll still go be like, I, why do I care about that? So the thing in which, you know, when when it's hot and you hear that, and you're like, yeah, that's that's why I'm going in this direction. Even in your worst times, that still doesn't, it still doesn't help. Yeah. And then you got to get up and you got to go do it again. I agree. We have to, when we, and a, let's, let's just say it this way, in today's world here, where we are, as a matter of fact, I see a lack of leadership as a, uh, a problem that we probably can't solve in our, our, we don't really have the answer to solve it ourselves. Oh, no. I think it's going to take a God movement, a God happening for it to solve itself. But just just looking at you and me, I'm, I'm oh, very I hard see. to, to describe myself as the kind of leader I am. Uh, it's difficult for me because I'm versatile. 
And there's a lot of, I have tr many talent, ma I'm a jack of all trades, I can do so many different things. How do you think, well, let's try this. But for you, let's, for you, yep. I want to critique you. Okay, do it. You're very intelligent but you're and very tactical. And what happens is people are not tactical. Yeah, I agree. In fact, they're, you're practical. They're not practical. And so in time, a tactician will be tedious. Yes. They will say, oh, another tactic to do. That's right. But it's, and so. It, I try to pull out of that and it just, it just keeps pulling me back in. I totally agree. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, and mine with me, I was a little bit autocratic. I was more, you know, an autocrat guy leader doesn't always consult or connect with everybody else, although I did a lot of connection with a lot of pastors. I know a thousand. But the problem was is that I was a little bit independent. And so, uh, but I had the heart. I had that supine quality yeah, yeah. that where people saw that and loved me, loved me to death. I'm their, still their pastor, they tell me, you know. However, um, how, uh, honestly, my personal problems were my downfall. Oh, I see. And we talked about this before. The personal problems of a leadership. Do you mean like your like your character? Yeah, the character. I didn't have trouble with integrity. I wouldn't steal a nickel. You yeah. know. But I had integrity. I had integrity as, as far as my growing up and everything. I, I, that's the way we grew up, old school. But I didn't have integrity of strength of character in my own being. I, I struggled with things that would would tear me down or discourage me or or uh, distract me. Can you give an example? I don't want to give an example, but I can. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very curious. I'm, you're, so, you've, you've, you've captivated me. So personally, I had a struggle. I grew up in a, a home full of pornography. Oh, I see. So I had that struggle. To this day, if I allow myself, I'm in trouble. Yeah. I must not allow my. I must not even. I can't even think about it. Yeah. I had trouble. I never had trouble with money or taking money. I ra we, my ch little church in Boston raised so much money. We put it in a bank. Didn't know what to do with it. We never had that problem, but I couldn't take discouragement. Someone would come up to me and attack me personally, and I took it deep within. I took it. And what what uh, one leader? I, I hate to do this, but w what's an example of okay. that? that that would like attack you personally? Yeah, and one leader came up to me and said, "John, you take yourself too seriously." Oh, I see. You're you're not indispensable, and I could not conceive. Oh, what do you? Oh yeah. What do you mean? I'm not the. In, I'm in. I'm dispensable. I'm the only guy doing this. Well, we forget that we're not the only <laughs> fish in the sea. You know, we're not the only thing happening. Remember yeah. Elijah? Boo hoo, boo hoo. He goes, no one is following. Just take me home, Lord. And Jesus said, or God said, I got seven thousand guys that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. Shut up, Elijah. Get up and go and tell. So he, he encouraged the leader to keep on going, even though he couldn't take it. Yeah. And I couldn't take that discouragement. That personal attack destroyed me. And I began to get insecure. Oh, man. And when I recognized, I'll just be honest with you, when I recognized, what am I doing? I, I got to stop that. That's not true. It's making me feel insecure. I am this. I am that. I had to rise up and try to take control again. Only trouble is, is, in the middle of personal, uh, I went through a darkness of divorce and stuff back in yep. 15, 16. It destroyed me. I couldn't put myself back together again. You know, I was a Humpty Dumpty kind of a guy. I couldn't put myself. But when I overcame it, I'm back. I'm back. And, and God has still said, you know, the whole time God never left me. He didn't he forsake me. You know, oh, yeah, you're too weak. You're done. Never. It was me. It was my own personal problems and that's what I'm talking about. There are you got to be careful when you judge leaders out there because you don't know them. You don't know them. And uh, mm. you got to be careful to get too knowledgeable of them because then familiarity breeds contempt. Oh, I've seen him let his hair down. And, and it's so familiar that contempt happens. You don't want that either. So leaders, you got to get a hold of yourself. And people, you got to get a hold of these leaders and yeah. back them. Uh, uh, I would back Mike here just because he's tactical and precise and intelligent. There are some leaders out there that not, don't even have half that, half of that. And that drives me crazy because they're all loosey-goosey all over the place. You can't have that. But we, we also can't have someone 
so autocratic, so so. No. People would come to me and say, "You're so you know so much Bible. You're you're arrogant." I would tell them, uh, "Don't mistake arrogance with confidence." Oh yeah, no, 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 no. I worked hard to get confident in my Bible, but some people call it arrogance, and and I I suffered for that. They attacked me. You're not humble. You're arrogant. Well, I took that personally, and it knocked me down. So I know, I definitely understand that, as as a person who's done a, you done made this, me do that I've, on air. I've I've, I've had <laughs> I've had to um, I've had to deal with that over time. I will tell you, I think I've gained so much confidence. And and what I'm speaking about very specifically is like computers and software development and, yeah. and stuff like that. I have so overwhelming amount of experience. I'm okay to just cut somebody in half over that. As in, like, in the past, I think people were much more likely to do that. Now, within, like, three seconds, I'll say things that if if they don't have a, a unique response I've never heard before, my words to them, like, I could say just, I wouldn't say it this way. That's not really how I do it. I might say it in my head, but that's, and that may come across <laughs> as my emotions to the person, but it's not literally what comes out of my mouth. I'll yeah. say something like, you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and it will cut so deep that it we're done here. Like we're done with the conversation. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it, they're because they're not they're not fighting me and it's it's not really um um it's not a prideful thing because I never built my skills on a computer with pride. I built it literally one keystroke at a time, one conversation at a time, um one argument at a time with hundreds of people over an ungodly number of hours. I mean, just to put this in perspective, like, cause some, I, I told this guy, I probably, I'm trying to like merge like 10,000 stories at once. One of the previous jobs that I worked like four or five years ago, um, they're like, they consider themselves to be like the best. That's like the nature of their, the ethos. You go there and they're just like, we're the best in the world. We're the best. This is a government organization, by the way. So well. <laughs> for people who are smart enough, they should realize they ain't the best. But um, I kind of stepped in there and I started watching them. Uh, and I very quickly put on like my Marine Corps hat and was like, these people are a disgusting mess. But they don't know that because they are choosing pride as their highest virtue is pride. That's ridiculous. There they're, so, they're so confused to this fact that they've chosen pride as their highest virtue that they don't even know that they're not. You know how I know they're not? I told, I mean, I I told them, I was like, uh, when I was leaving, they're like, let's exchange like critiques or whatever. I'm like, okay, I don't think you want to do that with me. And they said something, it was good information about like, uh, maybe like leading or like presenting or something. And I was like, you, who's not the representative of your whole organization, but you will be now, you guys think you're the best and you're not even close. That hurt, that hurt. That, that, that dug so deep. But the truth is, is like, and I was like, you got to understand people who are outside of this inward looking insanity, oh. they do stuff like they work at home. So yesterday I had a million other things going on. Um, I wanted to, oh, I needed to, to like print out plants and I've, I built like this this website so I can like manage our farm and all this kind of stuff or whatever. And I needed to like uh, get an Excel sheet of just lists of plants and so I could edit it and all this kind of stuff. But um, my website doesn't have that function. So I went there and I, I put it in there just on a willy nilly and it really only took me about 10 or 15 minutes to go and do that. The fact that um, I did that on my own time starts to tell you how seriously or how much I know that thing because I've spent 40 plus hours outside of work in a week yeah. doing my own things over many, many years. So when I come into con, and I know you know this, I'm trying to relate it back to, I know that sitting here, you will throw out quotes that you had to have spent, I'm sitting there thinking like when you said that, like, man, I read the Bible like all the time and I listen to this thing like I go to every, sleep with the Bible every week. And, I, this thing and I, go to, I go to I go to Bible study where we talk about this thing, and then I go to church and I'm like, I am so far away from that. Yeah. That it, but so what I what I can what I'm saying is is anybody who has any knowledge can see when somebody has a hell of a lot more knowledge than they do. 
You should be able to. You should be able to. And the people who can't, they're they're either they're either so ignorant that they're that they're ignorant of their own things, or they're so prideful that it's something else. It's really not about your knowledge. It's about like you, which yeah. is about them. Yeah. You know, we we know that. Yeah, so it's long going around about it, but but pride is absolutely a false confidence thing. That's probably and that pride be goes before a fall. It definitely does. So what happens was is that they'll trip themselves up in time. Somebody will show them up. Some kind of trip up will happen because they're so arrogant in their own right, their own ideas. And you know, sometimes they have innovated something that the rest of the group out there that's doing stuff needed. They, yeah. they might find an innovative thing to do that everybody says, oh, that is, we'll take that, and they'll use it. But, boy, believe me, they will take it. They won't pay you for it. You pay for it, we'll take it. And so you got to be careful. You're right. you got to be careful because people, uh, uh, leaders like that, arrogant leaders out there, come up with some fantastic ideas. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking one right now, this guy. I had a great idea from him. But man, he lost the church. He was so arrogant. He lost the church. Everything, all of them fell apart. But that idea I use to this day, because and I'm gonna give the specific. Yeah, I yeah, had to yeah. do with church stuff. Yeah, but mind. it was brilliant because he came up with that in, in his arrogance and stuff. I don't know how he came up with it, but innovation can happen with arrogant one man teams like Zuckerberg or Bo, Bez, whatever the heck his name is, the or Elon Musk. And they have innovation up to yin yang, and other people will take it, enjoy it, and use it, yes. and thank God for that. But in time, he will fall. In time, it won't work. In time, everything kind of rises and falls on leadership anyway, as far as I'm concerned. And if it's a poor leader, in time, it'll eat them up. I don't know if we got enough time, but I'll definitely say good ideas. That's another false confidence. Another reason. Everybody, there's so many, and, and this is coming from a person who has become very Another successful factor. over with innovation, new ideas. People will come to me to just crap out yeah. ideas. And, be and I'm fine that, to go do that. And there'll be leaders that can't understand why they're, what's the problem? This is a great idea. But they can't see the trees for the forest. They can't That's right. see that in the midst, they're messing something else up. They're missing something. Oh, and so uh, you that bring it up, you're the troublemaker. You're the bad person. You brought it up. Well, no, thank God I did. If you'd have kept caught on, you it might have yeah. saved you. You know, but I, I mean, I was, anyway. In 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 many situations, I've come to find that people who are not well. This is like the important. I've I've heard this before that this is the importance of being what what you might call the leader, like the person who is at the top of the pyramid. And I use that very intentionally because where the buck stops with them, where they really have no other person where they're going to lay out the problems onto that person. And, and I actually, I say a pyramid, but um, I have a, I don't know if I've got one. I should absolutely have like this. Like being thing up front, me. the point man. Yeah. Um, I actually have a logo that is my business logo that came from my book. And what it actually is, is instead of having a pyramid, it actually turns it into a, um, yeah. Uh, where the leader is actually in the center and there's various, uh, we'll call them sub leaders outside of it. And it ends up creating a circle and, and how these kind of work out. Yeah. And it's this kind of abstract concept that, that it to me exemplifies that, that example of a leader who's like, Oh, I'm just in the crowd. And, <laughs> but there's this, there's this body around them, but, um, but that person, once they're in like the center, they can't really, they can turn to people for avenued things, but they can't turn from the entirety. Somebody has to capture the entirety. And why that has to happen is people often want to, it's a, it's an ease, it's a luxury to have a focus where your focus is one thing or another. So like, imagine you have an organization and it's like, you're the technology person, you're the, the people person, you're the money person. And people like that because then they can close their blinders and they can just focus on that. But as you know, what will happen is they'll come to you and go, the most important problem we have is that our technology is not working. They don't know what they're talking about because they're not in charge of having to listen to the finance person and this or that. And it's like, bro, <laughs> I love how you think it's the technology. But if we don't get enough money coming in next week. You're out of a job, yeah. regardless, and so you have all this technology. So the leader the leader has to have some some uh, discretion 
when and what to look at. Yes, and they've got to they've got to be able to hear that stuff, and they got to be like, and that's where judgment comes in, and and like tact of like, yeah, that's really important. Okay, I'm not, you know, I I'm I'm not gonna tell them that his stuff's yeah. not important, but yeah. that you you have to have that understanding because, you know, I've seen it so many times in organizations where, the it's maybe not the leader like the CEO, but they're like, we'll say like a middle manager and they, for whatever reason, have convinced themselves to focus on a particular thing and they go, well, we can get out of this problem so long as we uh, figure out good ideas on innovation. I'm like, (laughs) we don't have a technology problem. We have a people problem. Yeah, We have a politics problem. Always, always a people problem. But anyway, yeah. There is always a people problem. I will definitely say, I keep saying there's a people problem, and I don't really focus on people as much as I probably would. So. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, people are people, and humans are humans, and we all have to deal with these kinds of things that, that come up. And, and, and then there's a, a, a whole other uh, monkey wrench, because the, the enemy plants evil seeds of ideas, and people think that they're from God or or it's a great idea, and it's just an enemy plant. So you got to be careful of that as well. Yeah, the good the good idea fair. You think that you're going to be saved because a good idea is going to come out of nowhere, but oftentimes what you need is you need to keep you need to keep persevering. You need to keep you need push, to keep going. You need to keep pushing keep through. Moving on. Just because there's resistance doesn't mean that you. I need think to pivot. so. And and that's. That is a lot easier to say than do. I will definitely say, you know, here, I'll put myself on the spot, John. You, you, you yeah. don't know what's happening in private. So, well, but in like yesterday, for example, I had a pity party in this chair ready to quit on everything. Yeah. Just because these things, you know, come in and I just start thinking like, I'm like, and it's not like I'm so stressed. That's not really what's going on. But I'm like, why do we even care about any of this crap? Yeah. And but you you have to wrestle with that and the reality oh, you is gotta, oh. oh what I what I really should do is I should drop these things. Yeah, that's totally the best idea I could do and it's like no, that's not what I should be doing. And you know as as a leader, I moved out in faith and some came with me and then they critiqued me before we even got down the road to see what's going to happen. Oh man. And then that critiquing did not help me move in faith. It just either gives you resolve, I'm going to keep on going in faith, or you quit. You just say, okay, to heck with it. The trouble with that is is that you had something good, you went for it, and it was good, and, and people are hanging in there about it, and you've got to see it through. I just want to say this. you just got, like we said earlier, persevere. you got to see it through. You, I mean... You started it. <laughs> See it through. Now, oh, you may in time have to make a directional move. You have to have a change of direction. A change. You got to make some changes. But see it through and and find what that change is and do it. Don't just give up and throw the baby out with the bathwater because there was a baby in that water, <laughs> and we don't want to pull the plug and let the baby go down the drain. We we we've got to see it through and some stuff. I, I and I, you know what? I get it. If some people say, you know, what you really did basically was was not good and not right, and it wasn't the Lord. Okay, <laughs> but let's see it through together. Let's stand up and come alongside one another, and see it through together to what God wants to do. I don't have to be the hot shot or the big leader, but I know what's the Lord, what He wants to do. I can I can pretty much feel that out. So I say to you that want to take a leader and take them to task. And give them a hard time about maybe you ought to come alongside. And if you're going to come alongside and see it through in faith and believe in him, and and you're a help, not a uh, to the leader, you're a help, not a hindrance. To the leader, you're you're a help meet, so to speak. You're you're coming alongside to to continue this situation rather than saying that's it, you're you're out, you messed you messed up. You know, sometimes we human beings are very unforgiving. And, and exacting. And again, like you said, we, we were talking about with you, you can't be so tactical that no. if, it, if it messes up your tactical thing, you got to quit. No, we need that. We just have to have those with a little more versatility to come alongside and help us. Nothing wrong with that. That doesn't detract you. And that's the thing, a wonderful thing about leadership in Christianity. You're not really detract you, just a, you're an also ran. That's not either or. It's either this or that. End of story. No, no, no. You're an you're a also ran. You're a and 
you know, you're, you're, you're a come along. That's very important because we want to cut and dry this thing, you know, and, and, and then later people will, I, I got an organization right now that got rid of the leader and swept everything under the rug and nobody knows why. <laughs> And everybody's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We loved him. We were with him. He's going good. And you cut him out and threw him under the roof. You know what that does? By, to- by the way, that happened twice with multiple different people. And it just happened, it happened to an organization I know. And they're still suffering from it. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Still suffering from it. And and <laughs> they're trying to heal it. They got a new leader, and he's trying to heal that situation. And I'm saying to him, just move on. Just move. You're not going to heal it. No, you're not. All by yourself because you. So many people were hurt by it. So many people remember it. You got to go through all that stuff to break it all out and, and fix it up. And that would be the power of restoration. If you can do restoration, great. But in business, it takes too long. Restoration takes too long. Mm. We're busy. But in the church, there's got to be some restoration. And it's already started to happen. I have to do say, I will say that it, some of the restoration is happening, and that means a lot to, to the to the to the whole. Well, the to the body. It depend. It depends on the the you know the success of that depends on whom it. It's always a whom. There are certain kinds that move on instantaneously. I'm one of those types. I'm. I got too much going on. It. Other than the fact that it impacts other people, I don't care. I, I don't I don't care beyond that because I I see like things happen in the world, not best things happen in the world. People make wrong mistakes. To me, I'm I'm comfortable with that, Ex- except when they're trying to do my things. But <laughs> um, there's other people though that that they really hang on to the past, and so they're moving. The way I look at it is, if you can imagine going through life driving backwards, and they're always looking in the rearview mirror, <laughs> yeah. or they're they're driving forward, but they're looking in the rearview mirror. The, the moment I realize that people are actually Either doing way, they, that, the, that to me is super scary because you got to look forward if you want to drive forward and you got to look backwards if you want to drive backwards. But they're always looking backwards and that's like 40% of the population. And so what that means is, is they have a long memory. So if they, like, like, so like some people were very close to me, if, if for you to... You're never ever gonna get pat like for them. You're you're never gonna. They're never gonna be like I don't even remember that anymore. They remember it, but you've earned you know and or like they've extended you grace because it's been long enough in the past. And so, but I'll tell you what doesn't work: not addressing it. Like just like you said, sweeping it on the rug because they now also have, they saw in the rear view mirror that you did that. Yeah. And then they saw that you swept it under the rug and they saw that you've never talked about it ever since. And it's still, they can still see in the rear view mirror that person who's, who was yeah. you know, taken out and that they were swept under the rug. That never goes away. You need to hop in front of that and go, I did that. Okay, glad we're on the same page that you admit it out loud now and probably wasn't the right move. I should have done better things. You probably don't need to go any further than that. And then now that is in the rear view mirror. And for some people, that's, they don't get this, you know, you're calling me a tactician. Yeah, to some extent, that's how, that's how you solve those problems. Pe- people's pride will get in the way. And they also think that yeah. it becomes a distraction. It is when it's inappropriate to say yep. it to everyone. Yeah. Well, I, 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 so many things to say about that, but yeah. one of the things is, you know like you were, me. what you're saying there is true is it never goes away in, in the minds of those that were hurt. Yeah, I would agree. Those that were mistreated, the ones that are clueless, eh, whatever. Yeah, I would agree. They're, but so yeah. those that were treated wrong and hurt, that doesn't go away. Yeah, but I know, because it's the chance you get you know, my wife used to say to me, she would say, remember you said I was a klutz? You're right. I said that in 15 years ago. They never forget it. They you're, never forget. You're right, John. So we have to be careful. And I, I'm sorry I said that was wrong. And yeah, that's what I say. You that's know. super important. But uh, in, in my in my stupidity at one moment, I said that. But I was just, you know, it was flippant. And unfortunately, it goes down and it's how I, I feel. And, and we don't forget that. So we got a, a, lot, to, a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. And we're going to talk again on leadership uh, in the area of um, the kinds of leaders, the different kinds of leaders, if we can. Yeah. Because I think that's important for you to see the different kinds of leaders that you have and what to do about them. So many people, oh, yeah, he's that kind of leader. What are you going to do about it? 
I think we need to do that, deal with that too. These are like some very thought provoking podcasts. If even if we're just yelling out to the space, I'll, I, the reason why I'm on my phone is not because oh, this is boring. Uh, it's because I literally have written down like four to do's. <laughs> They're like, <laughs> let's do that. These have got to happen because these are yeah, uh, it's important. Some, some of these topics are like, I'm absolute messing that up. There's absolutely something out there that I need to go take care of. There, there are there are wrongs that I need to go right. Like right now, I cannot wait. Um, well, my advice to you: most people need counsel. I don't mean uh, counseling like you got a problem. You need to yeah, go see yeah, 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 yeah. But what do you think? You know, you got to connect. What do you think? This is what my dilemma is. And sometimes we feel like that's a weakness, but actually, it's a strength. No, I actually was lamenting to my my mom who. Um, oh, they're great. Moms are great. Um, <laughs> I miss my mom. Lamenting to her <laughs> that she allowed me to do. She allows me to do that. Like uh, I'm just going to vomit on you, and you say nothing. <laughs> that's good. That that's good. Um, that there's that. But I mean, I told her like there are certain, there's certain kind it. of problems where I'm like. I literally don't know who I can even ask. Yeah. Maybe I could ask you about these things. This is a separate note. It's about like people things where I'm like, I don't know how to deal with my own frustration on certain aspects with people. Yeah. And I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing. So I go like, well, maybe I'll fight you nothing. <laughs> and that seems like a totally <laughs> no. Cause you know, if I really try the opposite of that would be doing nothing. And I think both of those are just not the case. Well, but, Lord willing, if we have time to do that, right now I got to run and meet somebody. But, yeah, this is. But uh, in time with our broadcast, we can deal with some of these things together. I, I still need to get that thing to you. Uh, I'm working on so we can nitpick things in leadership. But I think one of the things is we got to know what leaders are, who they are, what they're like, because there's so many different personalities out there, and you don't know what to do with them. And that one guy that. Well, why was, don't we do the one that you sent the the text earlier? I'm sorry. You sent me that text earlier. Yeah. When we do that uh, one? Something along that one, yeah. Okay. Because we gotta we gotta be able to know what to do with this. We bump into I mean, there are some leaders out there and they're horrible. No offense, but yeah, yeah, you're yeah, horrible. Yeah. But but we gotta learn what to do with you. This is very you know, true. maybe they're just suffering and need somebody to come alongside and say, Hey. A lot of technical leaders are terrible. Technical technical reasons, which is a a, a tactician. Yeah. They're, so so may the Lord help us. Yeah. Well, this is catch the vision. Hopefully, you caught some sort of vision. Blessing, yeah. And uh, we want we want to see the feedback. Um, we certainly appreciate the likes. Likes are likes are nice. Yeah. We want to see other feedbacks. Like, for example, if any of these things kind of sparked you, why don't you put them on there and share them? You might be you might be surprised That'll at help us. how uncomfortable it is to put it out there. But now you've just kind of laid it out in the the ethosphere. Yeah. Um, and. It, you know, we may be able to address some of these things, not necessarily directly, but in terms of like future topics down the road. Um, and we won't take it personally. We'll take it as a comp something to think about. <laughs> um, the the other thing too, we do this uh, every week, 8 a.m. Uh, and then we come back and then we repost them as we can. I'm a little on the backlog, but uh, once we finish this, I'm actually gonna yeah, this one yeah, gonna go and crank it out and, and get some of the previous ones up there. But uh, other than that, we'll see you soon. Blessings. Bye-bye.